All right, hey there YouTube. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick video. This is a very highly condensed version of some other uh, videos that I've been doing on uh, these Chinese Go cards. This one is just gonna be uh, as short as possible and straight to the point. For those of you who are just straight up looking for wiring schematics on a Rocketta GK19, this could also translate maybe over to a Ken Road, although I don't have any experience with one of those. I just assume that they're pretty much the same. My, I actually have a Moto Bravo, I have a 2008 Moto Bravo 250cc uh, buggy that has the GY6172MM motor in it, if that helps at all. But in any case, I'm just going to get right to the wiring uh, in, in this buggy. Uh, just to walk you through it, I'll give you kind of a tour. This one is specifically going to be for a DC CD, uh, CDI setup. So if you have an AC CDI set up, it's going to be slightly different. Um, and I will actually touch on that just a little bit. Um, but I, I kind of want to demystify this mess that you typically look at uh, when you get a Chinese buggy. I have uh, uh, two other videos on this uh, that I'm editing right now. I don't, have a, uh, I don't have them posted yet, but they go into a lot of detail in terms of me troubleshooting, and it'll show you actual footage of me working on the buggy and uh, showing you the physical layout of everything. So without further ado, let's get to the point here. Uh, so being a DC uh, setup, um, this ultimately, ultimately is going to be powered, all of your auxiliary, everything is going to be powered off of your regular rectifier. Uh, so we'll go into that in just a second. So before, before we go any further, this schematic right here is not my schematic. I actually kind of uh, pillage this off the Webernet in a couple of different pieces and I've just kind of organized it and brought it over here so if you come across this and you're like hey that looks really familiar to the one that I actually did you know you deserve credit for it leave it in the comments I'm not trying to take credit for this I did however make some significant edits to this to make it much easier to read um, I believe this was an original factory uh, diagram just the way that it was laid out I think it's been copied so many times you can actually see some of the the text has been kind of blurred in there so I've had to kind of retype uh, and relabel everything so that you can actually read it. Um, so that said, one of the first things that I did with this black and white diagram is I wanted to quickly identify, okay, where's my ground, where's my battery power, and then where's my other sources of power? Okay, so uh, you'll notice the, the kind of the, the green here, I'll start calling them pipes, but the green wires here are just indicating your your ground plane, how everything ties together uh, from a grounding perspective. Uh, quick, uh, just kind of key note here: anywhere you see a black dot, that means there's an actual wire connection right there. So if you actually have this intersection right here with ground, so that coming down and this one coming across where it crosses right there, those wires do not touch. They're simply passing by one another because it's the ground plane you know they'll eventually touch somewhere but they're not touching right here so that's just a quick illustration as to how this schematic is laid out a black dot means there is a soldered or physical connection uh, into that wire okay so um, let's just kind of start uh, let's first start let's talk about the ignition switch let's talk about how that's wired we'll talk about where it gets its power from uh, and then, and then we'll, we'll 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 finish kind of this the red circuit here, uh, and then we'll move over to talking about the regulator rectifier power and how that powers the CDI, etc. So I have in, in in my one of my other videos, I actually go into uh, more detail on how the ignition key is set up. So I actually have a uh, an aftermarket ignition key set up on this thing. It's a five wire. It actually has a Honda six pin. Uh, plug, but it's only got five wires in it, uh, and I'll show an image of that on the screen here. But um, this aftermarket wiring switch pretty much lines up pretty well with this schematic. Um, the question is, is in in which of the three key positions? So one, the the first position is off. The second position would be let's call it AC on or auxiliary on, and the third position is engine start. So when you're actually talking about the uh, which wires are touching at any given time? You don't worry about the colors. One of the one of the big things I can tell from the, from the, the guy, I think the reason I got this go kart so cheap, I picked it up for you know 450 bucks, and it, because because they couldn't figure this thing out. 
they were trying to match the colors on the wires with after you know aftermarket ignition they were trying to put green with green red with red blue with blue black with black and you can't do that you literally have to go through the wiring schematic and figure out what actually does what because in the end i found out that the only the only wire that he had correct on that ignition was the was the ground the green actually did line up with the green so that said, which wires are actually in contact at each of these three key positions? In the uh, when it's in the kill switch position, you you have a ground wire and a kill switch. So you'll notice this black with a white stripe and this black with a white stripe actually are connected right here. The and this kill switch actually is wired to the CDI and that's going to be position five. Okay, over here on the the, the DC CDI pinout. Uh, so when your key is in the off position, your your kill switch grounds off uh, here, and then that that basically turns off the spark. It turns off your CDI. So therefore your spark stops, and therefore the engine will shut down. Okay, the middle position with your AC on, uh, you actually have your uh, red, which is which is uh, battery power, right? It's it's ultimately on your battery circuit, and then you have what we're going to call switched power. And what I mean by switched power is as soon as your engine is running and uh, generating AC voltage to this regulator rectifier, it is going to put out 13 and a half or 13 volts, so some some voltage, some amount higher than uh, your your battery, your 12 volts, and that extra volt or volt and a half is going to be used to recharge your battery. That's why this red line from the regulator rectifier go, connects right to the battery because that is what's going to recharge your battery. So, so after that, um, the switched power actually comes on when you turn the key to the on position. Now that you have power coming into your regulator rectifier from your running engine, you're going to have power leave to charge your battery, and then you're going to have power leave the regulator rectifier to power everything else. So that's what the bold black lines here are. So you'll notice I get a bold black line clear down here, boom, into uh, my... Uh, we'll call it position two ignition uh, where it's just AC on or auxiliary on the red and the black are touching each other so basically what that means is is when you turn the key on you should actually your headlights should work your radiator fan could probably turn on if it's not on it's a separate switch um, you know anything that's on this black bold black circuit is going to turn on when you turn that key on uh, to the uh, AC position um, that's a very important distinction, by the way, when you're talking about DC CDIs versus AC CDIs. If you turn the key to the on position, and you can turn your headlights on, and if the lights on your speedometer turn on, you know, etc., then you actually have a DC system. And an AC system, I'll touch just briefly on that, and an AC system, none of that will happen because you actually have to have the you have to have the engine generating all of the all of the power. In other words, the engine has to be running. Uh, the to the, the stator has to be running, generating power. And as soon as the engine stops and the stator stops turning in an AC system, you don't have any more power. So therefore, all this other stuff just turns off. So I digress. Let's go back to the uh, the, the the DC circuit. Uh, so um, those two touch. Then the only difference with the 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 engine start position is you you now add this. It's actually yellow with a red stripe, and this could again the colors may not line up exactly on this, but you should be able to follow these wires according to the schematic and identify which colors they are. But ultimately, all you're adding in is the starter relay. So when you actually turn the key to this spring-loaded position, it it now uh, now red, black, and yellow with with a red stripe are now touching each other. The starter relay is engaged, which then engages the starting solenoid. And on the other side of the starting solenoid is going to be your starter, but that's not on the schematic. But but now your now your your starter is engaged at this point, okay? And then when you let the key position, when you let it go back to the auxiliary position, if the engine's running, you know, well, regardless if the engine's running, but either either everything is going to be on with battery power, or everything is going to be on with battery plus engine power. So. Uh, so that, that I feel like that covers the ignition switch, and and again, I'll, uh, by now I've already kind of put some pictures up on the screen, you know, for you to kind of see the the, the ignition switch that I was uh, that I was using. So let's jump over here down uh, real quick to the stator, and let's talk about how power is generated from the engine. 
uh, and then how that makes its way back into the battery. So here you actually have your stator. Your stator is basically a generator that puts out AC electricity. So AC, alternating current electricity, is, is what comes out of the, your outlet that's powering the computer that you're watching right now. Um, recharges the battery. So AC power is the only, this is the only location on this go-kart where AC power is is located. After these three yellow wires coming out of your uh, your GY6 engine, once it hits the regulator rectifier, there is no more AC power anywhere else on the go-kart. It's all converted to DC power or direct current. Okay, That's an important distinction because um, another way that you can tell, I mentioned that if you turn your key on uh, and w you want to know if this is this a DC CDI system or an AC CDI system, um, and I'll talk about the CDI here in just a minute. Um, basically, the uh, the stator puts out power with these three wires in three different phases. That's why there's there's one wire for each phase. But then also kind of coupled in there, there's this additional trigger system that is attached basically to the stator. It's like a separate component, but it it, it works off of the, the rotating stator. And as soon as this, the stator passes it, there's a magnetic detection that actually tells this little secondary unit in there. It's called the pulse trigger, or I'm sure there's a, pul there's a pulse emitter. I'm sure there's a bunch of fancy names for it. But all it does is, is send out a signal from this wire right here into your CDI that says, hey, it's time to spark. It's time to spark. It's time to spark. It's time to spark, right? So... One way that you can tell if you have a DC setup is count the number of wires coming out of your engine. You've got one, two, three coming directly from the stator, and then you have an additional two coming out of your pulse trigger, one of those being ground. Uh, this one actually is typically a blue wire that will go into your CDI. So if you actually had an AC setup, then you, you actually have to power your CDI directly from the stator. So you'll notice you actually don't get power directly into the, when we talk about the CDI pin out here in just a second, you're going to see how you don't actually get power directly from the stator use it in this DC setup. Um, the, uh, the AC system will include one additional wire coming directly from the stator, and it will come up here and over and directly into your CDI. Your CDI would be powered directly from the stator. So in this case, there's five wires. If it was an AC GY6 engine, then you would actually have six wires coming out of there. And for whatever reason, if you wanted to switch to an AC stator, you're more than welcome to do that. I don't know why you would. I like the I like being able to turn my headlights on on my buggy in the dark without my engine running. Just you know, run run things off of battery power. So you don't get to do that on AC systems. That's why I don't think they're very popular. Okay. So that said. Um, I think I've covered pretty much how power uh, travels uh, from the go-kart, where your power sources are, how you engage the different power sources, what your ground plane is. Everything else is kind of self-explanatory. You know, like here's your horn button. You obviously you need to have a, a wire that connects to your actual horn, the, the noisemaker, and the horn switch, right? Um, your kill switch. Uh, we, are, we actually already talked about the kill switch. Uh, but the light switch, same deal. Like you, the light switch is on the AC rectifier, or sorry, the rectifier regulator power. This bold black line, and then you have a brown line that goes, you know, to the lights, to your headlights, right? And so on, and so forth. Uh, your water temperature and your meter have some additional wires to connect to sensors uh, and to ground off, etc., uh, to other other ther uh, thermostats and and whatnot. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that because I kind of wanted this video to be somewhat short and sweet uh, for those who just want to get me to, uh, me to get right to the point with the wiring schematic. So let's let's move on and we'll conclude uh, discussing the CDI layout. And again, I have two other videos that are going to be way too long that are going to go into way more detail and background information uh, of me troubleshooting and and running into different problems and what I found out and how I solved those problems. This one again is supposed to be just direct to the point. So with this D, uh, CDI uh, setup, you, you actually have, you could have up to six wires. In my case, I actually only have five. Uh, so let's go through each of the pinout locations on the DC CDI. So this is your DC CDI. This is a bird's eye view of it. Just like this is it laying down, uh, you know, looking at it from the side. And this is it laying down from a bird's eye view. 
So you have one four pin uh, plug and then you have right next to it a, sa a separate sa uh, two pin plug. And they pretty much are all uh, labeled the exact same. So position one up here in the top left is going to be from your trigger. It's this guy that I, I told you about coming off of the stator. It tells the uh, the CDI when to spark. You know, as the as the stator is rotating, uh, as it's because it's attached to the crankshaft. And so in time, you know, with with the engine, if the engine's in time, then this is going to correctly tell the CDI, hey, it's time to spark. It's time to spark. It's time to spark. Okay, so that's a blue wire. In my case, it's a blue wire coming out of, in, in this bunch of five wires coming out of the GY6 engine. Uh, position two goes directly to your ignition coil. So you have your grounded side of your ignition coil, uh, and then you have, well, I guess they have it right here. You have your grounded side of the ignition, ignition coil, and then you have this other wire that comes directly from the CDI. That, that, goes in, uh, that is sourced from position two on this diagram. Position three and four are both ground, so this is kind of where you you bounce between the five wire and the six wire scenario on the DC uh, uh, the DC system. Um, the position three, if you have an additional wire, is just a ground. So run your use your meter, um, uh, use your meter, and and verify that it's ground. What I don't want you to do is make my mistake that I'm going to co I covered in one of my other videos, and when I publish that, you're going to want to see what I did because I actually blew up my DC CDI because I wired it correctly. I thought something was a ground and it wasn't. I'm not going to go into detail in this video, uh, but uh, both of these are ground. If you have one ground, use position four and leave three blank. Okay, leave three blank if you have one ground. Put it in position four. Um, and then position five is coming directly from the kill switch. Okay, so this is what's going to, this is what is going to ground off your your signal uh, when you when you use the kill switch. Now my go kart has a kill switch and the ignition switch. The kill switch will probably just always remain in the on position. I don't. You know, I don't really have a need to use the kill switch. I guess if there was an emergency or if my ignition failed for, for whatever reason and my key is not working when I turn it to the off position, uh, but it, really they these should do one and the same. They should do the exact same thing. I should never have to touch my kill switch. I'm just going to use my key the way that this is set up. Okay, so that's your kill switch in position five. And then uh, position six uh, comes is your power directly from your regulator rectifier. Remember, I mentioned that there's no direct power coming from the the stator, which would which is what would be the case if this was an AC CDI setup, and it's not. So it is going to get power, 12 volt power directly from the regulator rectifier. I guess it's 13, 13 and a half uh, volts, whatever. So we follow this wire all the way down, and that is how the DC, how the power. Is, it comes into the CDI because the CDI is a, is a circuit computer. It needs constant power, and that's where it gets it from. Okay. Um, um, again, this is a this is not specific to a Rocketta GK19 or a Moto Bravo 250cc like I have. This this wiring schematic with the DC circuit with the DC setup and a CDI. Uh, CDI, by the way, stands for capacitor discharge ignition. Um, it takes place of the uh, physical points and I'll throw an image on the screen of what I'm talking about so if you've kind of worked on older engines like I have you're probably more used to these this type of setup and having to fine-tune the, the gapping uh, to, so that your spark is correctly timed and uh, has enough uh, uh, has a good connection uh, but now everything is kind of transitioned over to the, to the computerized uh, ignition control and that's what the, the the capacitor discharge ignition module does so the CDI okay again uh, if you have questions uh, leave them in the comments this video was designed to be short and sweet uh, if you have uh, any suggestions on how this schematic could be improved uh, that would be fantastic you know to make it more broad range or feel free to you know pause the video and and s screen snip it and, and go edit to your heart's desire all right happy wrenching everybody